centripetal force and a car going around a curve on a, a flat road, a horizontal road, no bank track. Um, the radius for this curve is 130 meters, giving you two coefficients of friction. Static friction, 0.7. Kinetic friction is 0.5. We want to know the maximum safe speed for this car. Well, it's circular motion, so it's going to be the centripetal force is mv squared over r not giving you the mass of the car let's first consider where this centripetal force uh, comes from what causes the centripetal force uh, centripetal force is not a fundamental force it's always caused by something gravity or string in this case friction so the car's tendency is to go in a straight line we want the car to go around the curve we need a force towards the center to uh, bring us around the curve. And that force is caused by friction. Does the tire, this one, one of the four tires on the car, uh, headed down this way with our velocity, uh, does the tire have uh, a static situation compared to the road or a kinetic situation? And this may be a little uh, counterintuitive puzzling. The car is moving, but at each instant, the rubber in the tire is at rest with respect to the road. Unless you're slamming on the brakes and the tire is skidding, or if you have a lot of torque to the wheels and they uh, spin uh, faster than what ends up in forward motion for the car, uh, leaving a strip of rubber on the, uh, on the roadway, not a good idea. Uh, that would involve kinetic friction, but it's static friction for normal driving when the tire is not skidding along the road. It's static friction, so that's going to be the uh, the force. Uh, the force of friction supplies our centripetal force, and this force of friction is calculated by the static coefficient of friction times the normal force. The normal force is our force upward from the road on the tire and of course we have mg downward the weight of the uh, uh, car and it's going to be one fourth of the weight here there are going to be four tires four friction forces we're going to lump them all together and just to a, a single friction force acting on the car so if we do that uh, i'm going to continue this over here, this mu sub s and just mg, m is the mass of the car, that is our centripetal force and it's equal to mv squared over r, m the mass of the car moving around the circle, so we have the same m in both uh, positions and we'll cancel those off. So mu sub s, the static coefficient, acceleration due to gravity, the speed squared, we're interested in that speed and the radius, and we're, we're given the radius of the circle, so um, we're going to have mu sub s times g times r is our speed squared. Let's go ahead and put in the numbers, though, 0 0.7, 9.81, standard metric units, 130 meters for the radius is v squared. And multiplying those together, I came up with 892.7. You should check that with your calculator. That's v squared. Take a square root of both sides, and I found 29.88 meters per second, standard metric units. That's our speed for the car. Well, in the United States, that's not quite so convenient to think about. So let's convert this to miles per hour. Uh, 29.88 meters per second and over one our conversion factor we have available is one mile per hour is 0 0.447 meters per second meters per second in the numerator here denominator in our conversion factor so those units will cancel and we're left with miles per hour so rounding off a little bit 67 miles per hour so we should put a speed limit sign at this corner uh, for a dry road, this coefficient of friction is more appropriate for a dry roadway, um, 67 miles per hour. What if the coefficient of friction was larger? What could be true about the speed? 
Uh, if we have a larger coefficient of friction, instead of 0.7, maybe it's 0.9 for a good uh, set of tires on a, a good roadway that grips rubber tires well, uh, then our speed could be higher. Uh, if there's ice on the roadway, we're going to have a problem uh, because this coefficient will go way down for icy roadway, and that's what leads some cars to go into the ditch. There's, there's not enough frictional force to uh, make the car move in a circle, so the car goes in a straight line, uh, Newton's first law, and we get uh, the car running off the roadway. But there's a quick calculation involving centripetal force provided by friction. And another good thing to point out here is the 67 miles per hour, is that for a, a small car or for a very large car, an SUV, a semi-truck? It doesn't matter. The road, and this is a good thing, This phys the way the physics works here is good for designing roads. The road engineers in making this curve and then putting up the speed limit sign on the curve, um, the mass of the vehicle cancels off. So this would work for a small car or for a semi-truck or an SUV. Um, they all have the safe speed of 67 miles per hour if they all have the coefficient of friction of 0.7. All right. Keep practicing. Ask your instructor some questions.